What is going on, everybody? I apologize. I've, I had a weird internet issue, but Wisconsin wins week one, 38 nothing. Illinois State. A lot of stuff to talk about. I put the link out. I hope you can join me. We're going to talk about everything that happened week one, our reaction, just raw. Um, it's the therapy session, and we're here to do it. We're here to have the discourse. Jump on the show if you want to. Uh, we're going to chop it up on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Uh, week one is in the books. We're doing a live reaction show, therapy session. If you were in the previous one, I apologize. I had some weird internet hiccup. I think I'm good now. Uh, of course, it would happen week one. But I am here. We're excited for it. We're going to talk about it. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Locked on Badgers, wherever you're finding us. If you're on YouTube, if you're watching the show, if you're on the podcast, listening to it. Uh, week one reaction. I, I have the link in the show. You know, I put the link in the live chat. If you want to jump on the show, please do it. I'm here for the discourse. I'm here for the reaction. Um, let's get into it, man. Um, it is week one, and there's a ton of stuff to react to, right? We talked about it before the season. We talked about, you know, not overreacting to this show, but also reacting properly, right? Like, what can we take out of this? What what can we actually get out of this show? And what can we actually get out of this game, right? Um I think there's a lot. We talked about run pass balance. We talked about Graham Mertz. We talked about needing the passing game to be a little bit better. And I think it was, right? Like if there's one thing we can talk about, if there's one thing, and I'm going to bring the comments up as we as we do this. If there if there's one thing that I think is the biggest takeaway of this show, of this game, of week one, Graham Mertz looked good, right? Like we spent the entire offseason talking about Graham Mertz and – let me put the link into the live comments, by the way. If anyone wants to jump on the show, I highly encourage you guys to do it. I, I want this to be interactive. I'm putting the link uh, so you guys can jump on the show if you want to into the comments section. Please do it. Listen, Graham Mertz look good, right? <laughs> like we spent, I feel like we've spent two years talking about this. And he was 14 to 16. He looked in complete control, you know, the entire game. Graham Mertz was not taking unnecessary risks. He didn't turn the ball over. He had a touchdown. Quite frankly, you know, that first drop by Marcus Allen, he should have been at least 15 to 16. You know, he was great. That That is the biggest positive from this game, y'all. Let's, let's be I – mean, it's just unbelievable how confident he looked. And, like, again, again, let's be very clear here. This was Illinois State. This was a 4-7 Missouri Valley Conference team. Okay. We have to be incredibly clear here, but he would look great. You know, again, like there were games like last year, the last two years, where he, I mean, quite frankly, against bad competition, he looked bad. They didn't let him throw. You know, um, I, I there's a ton to get into this game, and, and there's some bad spots, by the way. We're gonna get into the bad spots, but we talked the entire year. The entire offseason, the harbinger of this team, the harbinger of success or failure for this team was the passing game, right? We talked about Mertz being the linchpin to everything. You got to come away optimistic to this, right? Um, a ton of comments. I'm going to get into it. Well, a couple of people I'm trying to get on the show. Again, the, the, the uh, tweet to get on the show, the link to get on the show is in the live stream. It's also on Twitter. It's also in our Discord. If you want to jump on the show, please do it, man. Let's talk it up. That's what this is. That's what this live show is about, getting all of y'all into the show. Let's talk about it. Let's chop it up. Let's get your comments up. If you want to jump in, please do it, man. Click on the link. Jump in the backstage. I'll bring you on the show. We'll talk about it. Uh, Graham Mertz looked really good. You know, uh, accurate, great decision-making. There were two or three plays in this game where Graham Mertz had nothing there. The protection broke down a little bit. He stepped up. And instead of forcing something, right, he rolled out to his right, and he got out of bounds. And that sounds silly. It sounds simple. It sounds um, like a very easy thing to do, but that's something he hasn't done in the past, right? We've seen a bunch of these moments where in the past, Graham Mertz has, you know, and not just Graham Mertz, Wisconsin quarterbacks outside of Russell Wilson, Scott Tolzien have, um, they've kind of forced the ball, right? And now we're in a situation where we're seeing Mertz really, really make smart decisions, right? 
drop the ball down, get out of bounds, extend the ball, get a few plays. We're going to get Scott into the show as well, a longtime uh, friend of the show. is. And again, everyone else that wants to jump in, please do it, man. Throw the comments up. Scott, man, week one, I was just talking about Graham Mertz. This is a live show, live reaction therapy session. He looked really good. He looked as good as we could have hoped. I mean, every ball was on the money. Every ball. And, um, you know, that's why you don't want to be hyperbolic with it, but he looked as good as he could look. Mm -hmm. You know, there was the one drop that was horrible, but I, I, I was glad that they went right back to Allen a couple more times after that. Yeah. And cause you know, he's going to be, he's, he's just, he's going to be a beast. We talked about the talent that they have and you could see it at wideout when those guys got the ball in their hands they're going to make some plays. I just hope they utilize play action more, but Mertz was fluid with his movements. He wasn't thinking, you know, he wasn't, it was just, it felt so natural. Like he was going through his reads quickly. He was taking what they gave to him. Nothing, you know, not doing anything stupid out there. So he was great. I thought, you know, like that my favorite Mertz plays, honestly, dude, and I'm sorry, I'm excited. Like I I'm amped up right now. So I'm talking quickly, right? Like week one, but my favorite plays were when there was nothing there. He just scrambled out and ran out of bounds for like a three yard gain. Yeah. Like that's awesome. Yeah. Or uh, like when I messaged you about that check down to Garendo mm-hmm. there instead of yep. forcing him to the end zone, you know, it's like live to play another, you know, another day, another down and just take what they give you. And as we open the offense up more, which hopefully we do, um, I, I think that that's going to be one of the, uh, you know, one of the keys to getting to that 10, 11 win mark this year is him not forcing it and just taking what's in front of him because within the system, there's going to be so what we saw tonight, we will see so many times wide open tight ends, you know, so many people in the box to stop the run. You've got, you know, you've got man coverage everywhere. Um, and if it's zone, then you've got that tight end dragging across the middle. But these wideouts, they're going to do well in man coverage, man. They've got some serious skill. So I think that's the key for him this year. Just be accurate. Take what the defense gives you. You know, I I was really impressed by – I didn't – I, I got to be completely honest. I didn't love the, the run, run, pass, run, run, pass on the first couple drives. But I, I really, really liked that Mertz just didn't force anything. And this first segment is all just Mertz because that was our biggest question. The entire six, yeah. seven, eight months of the offseason, right? It was, is Mertz going to take a step up? I think, again, it's Illinois State. We talked about you know, you can't overreact, but you also react. Like you also don't, don't ignore what happened against a bad team. We saw Nebraska lose to a bad team, almost lose again. We lost, saw Iowa almost lose to a bad team. Like this is a 38 nothing win. You know, like, let's not take nothing out of this. And Mertz looked great. So, yeah, I, I got to say, like, week one, as much as you can judge it just on a one-game sample size, like, this looks really good. You have to feel about as good as – I mean, and we basically had two turnovers with just insane penalties, just stupidity. You know, there right. there's, one of those I thought was actually kind of ticky-tack, uh, the personal foul on uh, – who was the DB? The late the second one. I thought the second one was super ticky tack. Like yeah. he was fighting yeah. for yards along the sideline. And they were just trying to, you know, you're just trying to get the guy down. Yeah. And, you know, we were, you know, we were swarming. We had three guys swarming over to the sidelines. So it, that one felt, but it's still, we had in, in effect two turnovers because of those penalties, giving them, you know, extra chances there. It felt like a 49 to nothing game though, when you watched it. I mean, Mm-hmm. The you know the the things that I'm I don't know most concerned about I want the offensive line to look more dominant you know I, I want them to be able to bully a little bit more I was hoping that they could do that more against Illinois State um, and we traditionally though it seems like our O lines take a few games to kind of mm-hmm. figure it out and get that chemistry down but. And then, you know, the DBs and the deep balls obviously can be concerning. Yeah. 
Well, we're going to get into that next. Like, okay. I, I think um, we got to take a quick break here, read some sponsors. I think Mertz is the big takeaway to start with, which oh, is absolutely. really good. But but I agree with you. There there are some issues in this game that, that made me a little worried. We're going to get into that next, and then we're going to answer user questions. We've got a bunch of comments we're going to get to. Um, really fun live show. I'm glad Scott's here to chop it up with me. Uh, coming up on Lockdown Badges, we're going to talk about what concerned us about this game because there are, I think, legitimate issues here that we saw crop up. So that's coming up on Lockdown Badges. But first, today's show is brought to you by the National Highway Transport Safety Administration. And, you know, are you one of those people who thinks it's okay to drive stoned? What's the worst that can happen, right? Um, you end up driving a little below the speed limit. It's a little funny. It's no big deal, right? Wrong. It is a big deal. The truth is your reaction time slow down when you're high. Not only do you put yourself in danger, but everybody around you. Talk about a buzzkill. Stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. It's not worth the potential issues. It's not worth the potential repercussions. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, you get a DUI. All right, I want to thank everyone again for tuning in to Lockdown Badger Saturday night. I know y'all been been doing cheese curds, beer, whatever it is. I really, really appreciate it. I already see a lot of people uh, watching live. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Badger one of your first listens as we continue to build this community. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on the podcast, uh, I really do appreciate your time. We're going to get back into it. Uh, Scott's on the show. And we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, we talked about Mertz being really good. Scott, man, what what worried you coming out of this game? Because Illinois State is is not a not a powerhouse. We got bigger fish coming up on the schedule, man. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully getting Smith back at that other DB spot will alleviate, you know, some of the holes that we kind of saw tonight. Um, sometimes I wonder if it's a schematic thing though with Leonard and the deep ball. Cause we've just, it's kind of been a trend over the last five years, um, that if there's a hole in our defense, it is the deep ball. Um, but so, you know, the DB play was, I mean, we had two picks, but, um, our cornerbacks looked pretty like Dort was not good tonight. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Dort got absolutely torched on a couple of those where it was just like, oh, God, thank God there's a safety behind him. And and the offensive line, they, they didn't look bad. I was just expecting them to come out and bash them, you know, Illinois State. I was expecting them just kind of road grade type. And we had, well, Malusi looked really good. On, you he, know, looks on a side. He, he looks really quick, bounced back. Um I like Julius Davis too, man. He, Julius looks, he looks quick. Um, but no, so for me, you know, I guess the question marks still are the, the, the cornerback situation. And again, hopefully Smith kind of helps address that. And then just really being able to develop that dominating offensive line that the whole team is designed around, you know? Right. Well, let me bring this comment up. So this is, uh, I can throw the comments on the screen now. I'm learning. I'm getting better with this. So I can show comments. I, Ionic Mystic says, do you think secondary would have been better if Smith and Clark had played? I mean, certainly Smith for sure, right? He's, he's I think, established himself as cornerback number one. Right. I, I think it's smart that they're being extremely careful with him with a hamstring injury. Although, I got to be honest, man, it's got to worry you, right? Like, if he's still not playing, like with yeah. a hamstring, like – I don't know if he's going to be back ready to play anytime soon. Hopefully they were just being really cautious, but they're not going to say anything. We won't know until he's like mm -hmm. missed two more games. And then we, you know, kind of make an inference at some point, <laughs> like, but um, it, hopefully, you know, he'll be back next week. Um, but yeah, they would have been much better, I think, because then Dort is moved down into, you know, the nickel or, Whatever, dude. Dort's got some serious work to do, but I think they would have been a lot better if they had Smith out there for sure. I thought I thought Dort looked bad, um, but we're gonna bring a couple of people on the show. We got Blake coming on the show. I'm gonna see if I can add him in. Blake, man, what's going on? What'd you think of the game today? You're on with Scott and Ryan. Oh, it was fantastic. I can't lie. You know, yes. great man, thirty-eight nothing. Got to enjoy it. So let me t let me ask you this, man. Um, mm -hmm. Are you more optimistic or less optimistic after watching this game? Because I think there were some weird issues defensively, but Mertz looked good. 
Yeah, definitely more because, well, obviously, you know, so you saw he had no really bad passes. Uh, he was smart with his decision making, and you know, you know, Allen looked great. The running backs looked great. Um, Rendo looked good on return. Mm-hmm. The defense, of course, the secondary is a little bit scary. And then Wolder got hurt. Same with Malman. But hopefully they're all right. So I would say more, though, for sure. Is that mostly based on Mertz? Um, yeah, because I, I think everything relies on him this season uh, going into it. That and the def- uh, just the defense overall. Because we know we have good receivers. And then Cundiff looks solid, too. Yeah, he looked real good. What Do you know what happened to Wolder? Like, what's the injury? I'm not sure. I don't have they announced it. No, I haven't seen anything um, as in terms of an announcement. I mean, obviously that'd be a huge blow. Although I got to be honest, man, and and Blake, I uh, appreciate the call in by the way. Um, Titus Toller looked good in his limited amount. So like, I think oh, there's yeah. some depth there. I saw Austin Brown get into the game as well. Mm-hmm. Obviously, obviously, you can't lose Waller, but yeah, I, I, I'm very impressed by the way they built depth at that position after like they had nobody there in the right. spring. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Zachman had the interception as well, yep. which is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, Blake, where, where are you calling from, man? I appreciate the call. Oh, I'm in New Richmond, Wisconsin. Nice, dude. All right. So let me ask you this. Um, going forward, Washington State next week, a uh, tough mm-hmm. matchup against a potential really good quarterback. You yeah. know, how are you feeling after week one? Like, I asked you if you feel better or worse, but like, do you think that this is a team with Mertz and some of the secondary issues that maybe can make a run at the West? Um, for sure. Well, Iowa, yeah, you saw they had a really close game against South Dakota State. Of course, they're a good FCS team, but it is an FCS team after all. Um, but I think I think they can. But there's some key games they have to win. Like Washington State isn't, um, especially yeah after our, you know the secondary flaws we saw during today's game. Yeah, man, I hear you. All right, Blake, man, I really appreciate it, dude. Um, make sure you keep calling back to the show, man. I, I really do appreciate the support. Of course, of course. All right, later. All right, um, Scott, let me let me ask you this. So you talked about the offensive line a little bit and hoping that it, it could have played a little bit better. Did you get a chance to really pick, pick out like a specific player? Were you? It's tough watching the game, but I was trying to watch Riley Malman be a new player. I, was, I love Tipman. Um, is there somebody that maybe like, didn't quite do it for you, or is just a general idea that the offensive line should have been a little bit better? I think it was just kind of the general vibe, you know, that, that hold that Malman had, I think that's just one of those he'll, he'll learn with experience. And that's one of those experiences to like disengage when you get into that position. So you're not blatantly holding guys, you know, by the Jersey. Um, I thought that he did pretty well out there. Uh, You know, Tipman, Nelson wasn't blowing guys off the line quite like I expected him to be, to be quite honest with you. Um, I think he's going to develop more. I mean, it's a new position for him this year. I think he's going to be really good, but when I focused in on him for a couple series, as much as I, you know, could watching the game live, um, he wasn't, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't creating much off the line of scrimmage there, you know, it was kind of a stalemate on quite a few plays with Nelson. Um, to me, it looked like Tipman was our best offensive lineman today. You know, that middle area is where most of the holes were created, actually. Yeah, and, and Braylon Allen's patience. We have another comment from um, Ionic Mystic. Allen looked fantastic as usual. Like, that that 96-yard run, man, his patience is just unreal for an 18-year-old kid who, who didn't even really play full-time running back in high school. Like, it, it's on, unbelievable. You remember a guy like Nakia Watson who would just pile into his, his blockers, right? Had no vision. And God love him, right? Like, he was an athletic dude. But Allen has just unusual vision. We've been so lucky because JT was the same way. Gordon had crazy vision to, um, you know, James White. They, all the great ones have had crazy good vision. Um, only one of them, like going back 20 years, Michael Bennett, it wasn't really about anything besides speed with him, you know, but most of the rest of them, our great backs have had such good patience and vision. And and that's kind of what the 
the whole premise of our offense is predicated on is, you know, creating those holes that you have to kind of wait for them to develop, you know, these pulling guards and tackle. I mean, which by the way, I think sometimes down at the goal line, we get a little too obsessed with pulling guards and stuff instead of just being like, I agree with that. Straight forward. I 100% agree. With it gets too cute. Like yeah. at, at some level, you don't need to pull a guard and send a tight end in motion when it's second and one, right? Like you're, you're yeah. bigger than Illinois State. Quite frankly, you're bigger than Michigan and Ohio State. Like you yeah. can just play power. Um, By the way, a, what's going on with OSU right now? Oh, I got it on up above me. It's 21-10 OSU. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. they, they locked it up. Um, right. They were a 17-point favorite in that game, though. So Illinois – or Notre Dame did cover. Um yeah. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to get in. We have a bunch of comments. I want to throw all the comments up, get to as much as we can with myself and Scott, talk about everything you guys have to talk about in the game. Um, Because, again, this show is about building the community, getting all your voices up here, therapy session. Uh, Let's hash it out, man. So we're going to take a quick break, but then we're going to come back, Locked on Badgers, get all your comments up on the show and talk about it with uh, Scott and myself. Really appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, Coming right back after this break from Locked on Badgers. Thank you so much for listening to Locked On Badgers, whether it's on YouTube or podcast, however you get to show your team every single day, week one therapy session, live show breakdown. And let's get to the comments. Let's um I wanted this whole third segment just to be about the viewers, the listeners, everybody that supports the show. Again, after this show, I'm gonna randomize everybody in our Discord. We're giving away James White autographed rookie card just as a way to say thank you for supporting the show. Uh, no shipping costs, no nothing. Um, just a heartfelt thank you. I really do, really, really do appreciate everybody. So let's get into comments. You ready for this, Scott? Yeah, let's go. All right. So we got uh, Bax Outdoor Adventure again. If I if I butcher names, I'm so sorry. Uh, Alan dropped two passes. Scott, by the way, can you see the comments when I put them up on the screen? Uh, yeah, I can. I love yeah. it. Love it. I didn't know. Okay, so. Allen dropped two passes, got to clean that up, but Mertz was on point. I think that's kind of just what we talked about. Graham Mertz looked really good today. Yeah. No, he looked great. And, yeah, the general takeaway is you have to feel good about this game because you feel good about Graham Mertz. And biggest question going into the season, we know about the running game. We know our defense is going to be solid. And this defense is young, and it's going to get a lot better, I think. You know, we've got a lot of athleticism out there. The biggest takeaway has to be Mertz. Every pass was on the money. I don't know if Allen – was that second one considered a drop? It looked like a good play by the DB. I think the second one was iffy. The first one was obviously a drop, right? <laughs> Allen – That was yeah, bad. <laughs> that was an, a first down with room to run, right? <laughs> like, But the second one, I, I, would call, I would call the second one a 50-50, maybe a 60-40. I think Mertz had inside – or Allen had inside position. Like Allen should have caught it, I think, but it was yeah. tougher. The first one was just a straight up drop. Yeah, and and I think you know, with more experience, like he's gonna be really good. There's a reason right. why he's getting the ball. I mean, that guy, he gets open. I love how these wideouts are able to get open. It it felt different, and again, it, it's against Illinois State, but we've played other teams. I mean, we played Army last year. I mean, in eight that, passes <laughs> in eight, that game. Yeah. I mean, and that was nail biter city to the last, you know, yeah. the last minute of the game. So, you know, you, you, we looked good. No, I Mercury agree. hundred percent agree. Uh, let's go. Uh, TM three, three, eight, nine Mullins, Dort and grass did not look so hot. So we definitely talked about Dort a little bit. Uh, not great. Like I, I thought Dort was, he missed a couple of plays for sure. Mullins was kind of a no impact guy. Um, I didn't really see much from Tatum grass either. Yeah, I think this comment's pretty spot on. I mean, we, we we don't expect, and correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, we don't expect Isaiah Mullins to be a penetrator, but it did look like he got pushed off the ball a little bit. And you talked about Dort already as as really not being in the right spot, quite frankly. Yeah, he's got to get a lot better else. I mean, he's just going to be a liability out there. Um, yeah, I didn't notice grass. I'll, I'll, take, uh, I'll take their word for that. I didn't really notice grass. But when Benton wasn't out there, it was, you know, he's got to be out there to man that middle Mm. of the line. Because Mullins, yeah, his job is to kind of just eat up a, you know, a guy or two and, you know, keep his space intact. Um, 
he's just not much more than that. Yeah, you're not going to get a lot of penetration from him, unfortunately. He had one play, though, it seemed like. Didn't he get close to a tackle for a loss or something? Well, yeah, Mullins. I don't remember with Mullins. I mean, I thought Gio Pias flashed a little bit, if we're talking defensive yeah. line. I, I thought he looked really good. Um, he Mullins, to me, looked kind of like a non-factor, which I got to be honest, I kind of expected. That's kind of what yeah. I – that's kind of how he's been. Yeah, I expect him to hold the point and not much more. Um, I expect the impact to come from Rodis Johnson, James Thompson, Keanu Benton. Um, TM, man, thank you for the comments. He did leave another one really quickly. Cundiff and Rucci look solid. Yeah, I mean, I, they caught the, the balls to them, right? They they were wide open for the most part, but you right. still have to catch the ball. Um, I think that, I thought they looked really good, and Mertz found them. They look like Wisconsin tight ends, man, which I'm all about. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Um another one from Backstar Door Adventure, Torchio. Yeah. What about that hundred yard interception return when it looked like Illinois State was dominating the game? Right? Dude, that was kind of out of body, all of that going on. I mean, I'm thinking, dude, we're gonna go down seven nothing to Illinois State right here. Um, Torchio is a baller. And when you go back to watch his height. Hike- because we got him as a preferred walk-on, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was a preferred walk-on from, yeah. Cal- from California. California. He had a Cal offer. So he was like a low three-star guy. And I always want to dig deeper into that story. Like how – I don't even know what the connection is there. And I know I don't know if I missed that. Right? Yeah. I, I, I know that they were really happy. And I remember watching his high school highlights and even talking to some friends. I'm like, dude, this Torchio, like he's, he's got some, he's a good athlete. Like yeah. he's all over the place. And every, every time he's been on the field from the first, you know, time he was, was it last year that he was starting to get some actual playing yeah. time? Yep. And he, he just makes plays. Yeah. He, he just, just makes plays. plays. And yeah. he doesn't look that athletic. Like he's definitely, he's definitely not a plus plus athlete. Right. But he like has that football IQ. He has that football instinct that just yeah, allows him to play a little faster. And he's Absolutely. not a bad athlete. Um, yeah. That's wild, man. Let's, let's keep going through these comments. Um, John Kotmeyer looks like moving beach to guard was the right move. Yeah. I, I, that's something I talked about in the off season. Listen, I'm wrong all the time, but I'm also right occasionally. And <laughs> beach beach talked about how, much better it was for him at guard right like it was tough for him at tackle like he's not the fastest guy he's not that crazy long reach guy like riley moleman who's six eight with crazy long arms but at guard i think he can be really good he definitely looked a lot better at guard (laughs) it was a good move it was a good move that's we'll just put it that way um and again i and this is why i think the offensive line will continue to get better we've got Guys playing new positions, you know, him and Nelson. You've got Malman, who's first-time starter. Uh, I think that they're going to continue to get better. They're going to need to get better, you know, because our whole game is predicated around that. Um, so, but, no, Beach looked really solid at guard today. Uh, I think next week we're going to find out. I mean, it's pretty obvious since we're playing a much better team, but we're going to, a lot of these other questions will be answered. Like, will our DBs be able to hold up against, Mm. you know, schools that can actually complete passes and uh, with top flight wide receivers and quarterbacks? Because Ward is, Ward is no joke, man. You're talking Cam Ward. Yeah. Washington State's quarterback. Yeah. He's, he's, he, you know, I was watching some of his highlights, man. Like, he's a legit guy. Now, yeah. I don't know the rest of the team, quite frankly. Like, I, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on Washington State's supporting cast, but that's right. that's going to be a step up, you know. And we're going to get into some of the comments. There were some comments talking about the secondary here, uh, but it didn't look great, quite frankly, considering who we were playing. I thought there were some some pretty open receivers and some plays not made on footballs. Um, let's keep coming through these comments, though, because I really want to hit everybody. Uh, for all the people making comments, man, uh, first of all, Scott, thank you again for jumping on. You're awesome. You get tons of great feedback whenever you're on. People think you're way smarter than I am for what it's worth. Um, and for all the people re- making comments, Yannick, Mystic, Bax, TM, John, um, we're going to try to get to as much as we can. Thank you so, so much for supporting the show. We're going to get to as, as much of them as we can today. Uh, Kyle Mertz, or Kyle Matre, sorry, just says, Mertz, let's go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah right like i hear you man <laughs> like you that's great yeah that's this game in a nutshell yeah 
Can I tell you, like, not to not to beat this to death because we talked about it for a segment, but he just looked in control. That's right, like completely good with settling for a six yard pass if that was all that was there. Yeah, no happy feet. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the game it looks like it's slowed down now. You know, um, hopefully our pass pro continues to. Um, you know, stay intact uh, as we face stiffer competition because you can see the difference with him between, you know, and any quarterback really, you know, running for your life and then getting into your head that there's going to be a D end beating beach around the corner on every play and then having time to go through your reads. Yeah, one yeah. one- Oh, oh, sorry. sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just going to say one thing that I would caution people. There were a lot of wide open throws against Illinois State. Oh, yeah. Right. Like those those throws aren't going to be there against Iowa. They're not going to be there against Ohio State. Right. So yeah. obviously it's great that he hits those, but like. Yeah. That's why that decision making is, like I said, going to be the most important thing because those throws won't be there. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be continuing to be accurate and making good decisions. Um, and quite frankly, you know, against better teams, they're going to have to open the playbook up more. We saw what happens if Wisconsin decides to do play action on first down. I mean, the whole field is wide open. So, you know. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we got, let's see, Big Apple, Balky. We'll know a lot more after next week's game against Wazoo. Can't tell much when playing uh, an FCS team. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. You know, like, what well, next week's game is going to be a legit test. People have wrote this off as we have three cupcakes to start the season, and then it's Ohio State. Washington State's going to be no joke just because they have a real quarterback. Now, he didn't play great week one, but that's going to be a better test. However, I, I would push back a little bit when you say you can't tell much when playing an FCS team. You still can see – like Mertz still has to make the throws, right? He still has to hit open people. You know, there were games we played last year against, I mean, again, you talk about army, we completed eight passes against army where he wasn't making the throws that right. he made. Right. So, so I, I think there's, there's things we can take from it. Um, but I think we'd all agree. You, you can't take it. This doesn't mean the passing game is, is fully healed either. No, no. I mean, we've got to keep showing it every week. And until we play a good team and it looks like this, you know, I'm going to be fairly uh, apprehensive. <laughs> like, yeah, we're not going to get uh, too carried away here. But at the same time, as you said, you still have to react. And this feels good. It feels nice. This feels a lot better than, you know, 27 to 14. And Mertz threw, threw a pick and fumbled. And, you know, so it feels about as good as it could feel beating this tonight. let's jump into uh bruce reed and again i'm, I'm not gonna be able to get to every comment guys I, I really really wish i could i do appreciate everybody joining in i can't on as much as i want to i can't keep scott for hours upon hours like i, I think he has a family and a life and a job <laughs> um bruce reed man uh thank you again for supporting the show from the results how well did the coaches new coaches did preparing the players what do you think scott um well, we, we know Bo Stad, I mean, is back to his old position. They looked better. They didn't look as good as I wanted them to look yet, but I think that they'll get there. And the offensive line definitely did look better. Um, Ingram, it's hard to tell still. Yes. You know, it's, we looked like Wisconsin. The only difference to me was that Mertz looked better. But – I mean, it, for all I know, like they turned off Ingram's headset and it was still Paul Chris calling the plays in. Like, it was, I mean, yeah, it looked the same. Um, and then <laughs> our running backs coach, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess he patted him and said, go out there and do your thing that you guys always do here. <laughs> I guess the running backs looked great like they always do. But uh, I would say this, man, I. I was worried a little bit. One of the things I said pregame was, um, you know, you have a new offensive line coach, new tight ends coach, new running backs coach, new offensive coordinators coach, new quarterbacks coach. Let's see how quickly plays get in. Let's see how quickly they they execute. Are there a bunch of 
you know, false start. So do they have to take timeouts because they can't get a play in? I thought all of that was pretty on point, right? There were a couple special teams penalties. Um, I thought for the most part, it looked like the offense was pretty well oiled in terms of what they were trying to do. And to me, yeah. that's that's all you can really ask week one with like five new coaches on the offensive side. It looked very fluid. Yeah. Right. It it looked fluid. It didn't look like there were a bunch of new coaches. Right. And that no, kind I, of goes to this culture too that they've developed, you know, where they just they're gonna look like Wisconsin and we just wanna keep them elevating that up, uh, you know, a notch or two. So by the way, can I really quickly just say, and this show's already going long, but I don't care. Um, locked up. I mean, we're supposed, I'm supposed to keep it like 30 something minutes, but it's week one. We won the game. We're 38 yeah. nothing. Yeah. And this is in the context of Nebraska almost dropped going to 0 2 against uh, North Dakota State and Iowa scoring seven points, right, against South Dakota State. So, like, we're, we're here and we're frustrated by certain things, and I get it. But we also won 38 to nothing in week one with like five new coaches against. Listen, right. Illinois State traditionally is not a bad FCS team. Like they're actually their right. head coach is like eighty something and sixty. They're usually pretty solid. So, I I think we we do want to take something out of this that says I think we're the trajectory is in the right spot. Um, let's keep you in some comments up here because I definitely want to get to as much as possible. Some more questions about the Hunter Waller injury. I I honestly don't know. As soon as we get more, we'll definitely talk about right. it. That would be a big blow with that. Uh, obviously, um, let's see. We got uncultured barbarian, great name. I think these guys will get better the more they play together. We have a few things to clean up. Yeah, this is a young team. Like this is young in a lot of spots. Like offensive line, running back, receiver, linebacker. You know, there's a lot of new players. So I, I think Scott, you talked about this. I think this team's gonna get better and better. Yeah, and and typically we've seen that in the past where it seems to take our line two or three games to kind of get their mojo and get their, get their rhythm. And it makes sense because of all of the movement, you know, all of the polling. Um, I'm glad we're, we're playing a, a couple of non uh, big 10 teams to start. Uh, Cause we saw last year, we, we just got mowed under at the beginning of the year and you know, the, the Bostad influence and impact it, it is already, it has been felt. We saw it today. It's going to continue. So I, I think that they will be just fine. I want to see Nelson really destroy people. Though, man. Yeah. yeah. They didn't look, I don't think the offensive line looked dominant, right? I think I thought it looked good. I don't think they look like they imposed their will. If no, that, yeah, those, those goal line plays is where I wanted to, to really see that. You know, I didn't, I was kind of pissed off. We got to fourth and goal at the one. It's like, give me, come on. Right. That's, <laughs> you know? yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I felt like we, we were good, but not great in the trenches on both sides, really quite frankly, like Illinois state had some success running the ball as well. Um, more bouncing it out to the outside, not as much up the middle, but it felt like our trenches didn't impose their will as much as you want for an FCS team. And that's something to look for going forward. We have some tough games yeah. in the trenches coming up against an Iowa, Minnesota, and Ohio State where like, those are going to be battles, and we have to be better there for sure. Um, let's talk a little bit about – there's another one here. Kevin Wills, who – Kevin has been a, a supporter of the show for a long time, so really, really appreciate Kevin. Um, all the comments, all the support, you're awesome. Um, really, really sharp as well, by the way. All your comments are usually spot on. And I think this one's spot on, right? Two cornerbacks missing. I get it. But the secondary concerns were still there. Like Jay Shaw was out there. He gave up a couple passes. I thought Zach Eniston at times carved us up. Yeah. And Shaw had two holding penalties on returns. Mm -hmm. uh, not his, but he had one nice pass breakup, but uh, not a great debut. Um, I'm sorry. I just can't get over this Iowa seven, three game, dude. God, is with bad. two safeties in a field goal. <laughs> like, that's so Iowa, right? Oh man. Like uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? We, I think Wisconsin fans are rightfully can be very rightfully frustrated at times with the offensive direction. This program has been, however, we don't have Paul Chris son calling the offense in a game where we score two safeties in a field goal, right? Like it could be way worse. And you know, there was a comment. I didn't even throw it up on the screen, but somebody in the chat said, at least we're not Iowa and a hundred percent. We scored 38 points without, yeah. 
without I seeing say that these. every day. Yeah, thankful um, every day of my life for that. But I would say, like, I agree with Kevin on this. I thought the secondary, if I, if I take one thing out of this game that concerns me, um, it's probably the secondary. I, they yeah. really had open lanes to throw. I thought they were able to fit balls in. I don't think our, our defensive backs made a lot of great plays. And there were there were situations where, like, Torchu was trailing a, a tight end, a, kind of a lumbering tight end. There were situations where they were able to get throws up the sideline where I, you, you got to remember, Ohio State's coming up, right? Like, <laughs> If Zach Enningston can complete 65% of his passes against this defense. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I, it's, I'm glad that they're playing, uh, you know, Washington state next week, because again, a lot of questions will be answered. And, and I think it'll just be really good for that defense to see a lot more speed, a lot more skill, see a team that's going to throw the ball around a bunch. They've got some really quick wide outs. I was watching highlights uh, from last year and from their first game. Um, they've got skill at the skill positions. They've got, they've got speed, you know, so it's, we're going to be infuriated at times, I think next week, you know, yeah. I'm prepared. I'm prepared to see like multiple 35 yard, you know, receptions that we give up. Well, hopefully hope Alexander not. Smith coming back, by the way. We, we That was in the comments as well. I forget who put that in there, but getting your number one cornerback back shuffles everyone. It's like baseball, right? You get your ace back, and suddenly your number one becomes your number two, and your number two becomes your yeah. number three. Like, it matters. But still, it's also Illinois State, right? Like, yeah. you, you would expect to be a little bit better there. A couple more quick comments. Again, I apologize, everybody. We're not going to get to every comment. I've already kept Scott for 40 minutes. Um Let's talk really quickly. Uh, Mr. Ox Manful um, said Torchio's sister was an athlete at Wisconsin. So that's the connection, you know, in terms of getting in from California to Wisconsin. So oh, okay. I really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Bax Outdoor said, I need to pronounce his name, Bach. Okay. From from now on, I got you, Bach. Bach's Outdoor Adventure. <laughs> um, here's a good one. I wanted to finish on these last two comments. The Yonic Mystic. Herbig looked great. So I do want to talk about this. Because we, we, we spent a lot of time talking about how Herbig is now the number one guy. Chanel's gone. Sanborn's gone. Henningsen's gone. Herbig was unblockable. Like, this is his last year in Madison, period. Yeah, Stop. No like, he was incredible. After what we've seen with, like, an endless amount of other uh, linebackers go into the NFL, I fully expect him to be a first or second round draft pick this yeah. year. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't look like Watt, like they're not the same guy, but he has the same type of influence on the game as Watt did. TJ, you know, it's just his every game. single play is just. <laughs> his get off is incredible. Like he, when he yeah. times a snap up, I mean, it's just unblockable. He, he's, he's unblockable. And again, I know I, I could never hear everybody saying it's Illinois state, but listen, there's a level where, you, it doesn't matter who you're playing. You can see it on film. It's obvious. Like he is so good. Right. And well, he's that's why be so knew, good the entire year. You knew going, and you said this the other day, you knew going into this year, like this is going to be his last year because when we've seen it, if you remember his freshman season, he only got like one or two sacks, but you, you could just see that he was mm. so close so many times and he was going to grow into that. And he has grown into it now. Incredible. Um, last comment here. And again, I, I really do apologize for everyone. I didn't that every comment I didn't get to. Um, I do read them all. I really appreciate everybody supporting the show. We're going to get to as much as we can every single show. We're going to continue doing live shows. Uh, we got one guest on today. I encourage everyone. I'm going to put the, the link up so everyone can jump on the show. I want everyone to be able to interact, right? We're better when more voices get on the show a hundred percent of the time. So I'm going to keep getting better at getting more of those voices into the show. We're going to finish on this comment here. This is uh, from D Straw. Are you surprised? And Scott, what's your take on this? Are you yeah. surprised Burkett came in in the end in, instead of Hill? I was blown away actually by that. Um, it Maybe it has to kind of go to their impressions too when Hill came in really not ready to play in spring. Um I'm sure as a coach, when you see one guy who's studying up on the playbook and mm -hmm. he's there early and he's ready to go and another guy seems to be taking it for granted. I know that Hill dropped like, what, 25 pounds or something after that, right? Didn't he? He, but, he lost weight, but he, 
Yeah, he came in at 260 plus. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. so I had heard really quick, um, I had heard some a whisper that I, I shouldn't even say I, all I would say is this. Like I I the 260 pound thing was an eyebrow razor, like coming in a little heavy when you have the ability to compete for the number two spot. That's, right. that's where I'll leave that. Um, yeah. And that's why it makes sense that they put, I was excited to see Burke it out. There it was a bummer that, you know, they threw a, a blitz at him and he got destroyed. Yeah. On his yeah. the ball. That, was a, that was a poor blitz pickup. Let's, yeah. let's, <laughs> I don't think that's on Burkett, man. Like they just passed yeah. that dude off. <laughs> they had a couple poor blitz pickups. The only, a uh, knock on Braylon tonight was that blitz. He didn't yeah. pick up and, and almost got Mertz killed. By the Wait. way, Ugh. really quick on that. Sorry. Like, I don't mean uh. to cut you off. Really quick on that. My heart stopped in my chest because I know what we have uh. behind Graham uh. Mertz right now. It looked like – it looked like it, for a split second, I'm like, the season's over. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. he just took his legs out, you know. Yeah. No, I felt the same way. But with, with uh, Burkett – I hope we get to see what he's got, you know, if in one of these next couple games. I, I'd like to see him in high school. He's got good mobility. They say he's really smart. Uh, he doesn't have like a cannon for an arm, but, uh, you know, he's an in-state kid. He won the Dave Craig Award, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it'd be a great story if he could develop into a two-year starter at Wisconsin somehow or something. That'd be a great. little more, yeah, a little bit more mobility. Like definitely, definitely a guy who has some tools. Like he just doesn't have Deacon's like howitzer arm, but I think the right. rest of it's probably there for him. Um, they seem to be yeah. really happy about him so far. I guess let's, he's really shown a lot in practices. So let's finish up with this one. I know I already said I'd finish up with one, but I haven't seen a comment from Zach Ramsey yet, and I definitely want to get him on the show. Uh, how did Mertz look in the pocket? I'm going to start here and then make it over to you, Scott. We're going to wrap up on this. I got to say, I thought he looked way more poised than we've seen in the past, even to the point where when he was stepping up, everything looked like he had a plan. Yeah. I think it's just that experience, seeing everything before. This is a kid who came in, you know, recruited by everybody. Then everybody doubted him. Everybody became a hater. He's never lost his confidence, as, as we've talked about. He's never lost it. And he looked amazing in the pocket. He looked amazing out of the pocket. He looked amazing all over the field tonight. Mm -hmm. I just hope that we can keep that up. Um, but I think he's on kind of his own private personal revenge tour in a certain way. Cause that guy's got a lot of moxie, a lot of confidence, and there's no way he hasn't heard all of the people, you know, doubting him. I'm, I'm certain of that. So I a hundred percent agree. Uh, that if there's one thing Grammars does not lack, it's confidence, which we've talked yeah. about. Like, there's been some fans online that have said, well, what has he proven? He shouldn't be that confident. I'm like, listen, listen, a quarterback should always be confident. Yep. It, like, good or bad, right? Like, as soon as that dude's not confident, then there's no it's chance. It's, it's over. over. Yeah. So I've always respected the heck out of Grammars for the fact that, like, he really believes. And yeah. you need that. So – uh, we're going to wrap up there. Uh, it's We're already at almost 15 minutes, which is way more than, than Scott owes me. He doesn't owe me anything, and I'm already taking more than that. So, uh, Scott, thank you so much for for jumping in the show, as always. We're going to do – for everyone listening, we're going to do live shows after each game, and my goal really is to get all of y'all into the show. So I, I post the link. Definitely let me know either on Twitter or in the Discord if if that's not the easiest way to jump on the show. I, I definitely want to make it easier for someone to jump on the show, be able to throw your, your – your, you know, whatever your thoughts are out there so we can discuss it. You can get it out there. I think that's good for the community, which is what this is all about at the end of the day. So um, let me know if there's an easier way to do this. We did get Brad on the show, which I really appreciate. Thank you everyone for the comments, for the listens, for the likes. Uh, Scott, again, we're smarter because you're here. I get tons of good feedback when you join the show. Um, I think people really think you're smarter than I am on this. So it's, it's awesome when you jump in and with that, Man, Wisconsin, 38 nothing. week one's over. I think for the most part, good news. We're waiting on the Hunter Wohler injury, but hopefully it's something serious. And uh, we're going to talk to you guys soon on Wisconsin. Uh, Scott, you got anything to throw in there? I love it. 
throwing the, the W up. And with that, we're going to end the show. Thank you guys so, so much for all the support, all the listens, all the comments. And if I didn't get to it, I'm sorry, but definitely next show on Wisconsin. And we'll talk to you tomorrow.